Okay. Sounds good. We're here at the Hunt, Fish, Eat podcast. I'm here with Tyler Dykes of Show Me Fly Guy on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. How you doing, Tyler? Good. Good. How about yourself? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good on a Sunday good. afternoon. Yes. So I'm glad we were able to finally, finally link up. Um, I think we're going to f- do this on Tuesday and then uh-huh. you went fishing or <laughs> yeah. my I, I had a shooting event. It's a, it's a wild time. So I figured when you said you had to go fishing, I'm like, okay, this is the right guy to interview <laughs> because, you know, you're taking time fishing. So um, how I met you, I met you down at um, Lily's Landing uh-huh. in, in near Branson. Um, we were with the Conservation Federation of Missouri. Mm-hmm. They're kind of riders, um, rendezvous, a round table kind of thing. Yeah, they call it the, I think they call it the media camp. Media camp. Yeah, yeah that's that's good. So we were doing some fly fishing on uh-huh. Lake Tani Como, and uh, we had some good food and had a good time. So yeah. um, I kind of get, I was going to fly fish with you, and then it didn't work out. We were right. on the same boat. So, yeah. But, um, Which, ironically, I ended up hooking up with that guy um, about two months ago. Okay. Red Raider out of Chartered yeah. Waters. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's the real deal, man. Yeah, I was glad I finally got to get in the boat. With him. Yeah, that was that was a really fun afternoon with her and morning with him. So yeah. it's it was good. It was a good yeah. time. So um, what I want to talk to you today is we we're kind of talking a little bit before the podcast. Um, I want to talk to you about fly fishing. Yes. So I've fly fished a little bit. I've fished I've fished a lot and hunted a lot. Um, you're kind of fly fishing expert in my opinion. Well, thank so, you. That is flattering. Um, <laughs> but before we get into that, I want to talk about you. Um, so I know you're a teacher, right? Yes. Kind of go into that a little bit. So I teach. Um, well, this is my this is my nineteenth year teaching, and definitely the weirdest year teaching. Yeah, absolutely. But nineteenth but year, um, I have always taught middle school, sixth, seventh, eighth, something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, right now, I teach eighth grade science. And I actually have a middle school fly fishing club, too. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah, it worked out pretty cool. I, I, I started talking to my students about it one year, and there was a few students that said, hey, can we just stay after school one day and, like, you show us some things? And luckily, one of those kids that wanted to learn was the son of the principal. <laughs> gotcha. So that really got my foot in the door for making this, like, a real a real program. And um, that was that was almost 10 years ago. And we've got a set of 20 fly rods, 20 fly tying stations. We go on six fishing trips. Um, but it's, it, yeah, I think, I think we might be the only middle school fly fishing club in the state. That's pretty incredible. So I know that fishing in yeah. general has increased as a sport yeah. in high school, uh-huh. um, as is shooting. Um, you know, yeah. I, I make the joke now is if I was 16 and you told me that I'd get a scholarship to college to shoot, yeah. oh, I would have done a lot better in school. <laughs> You know, <laughs> yeah. and I'm sure it's the same with fishing, man. That's, Absolutely. That's really cool. So, um, is as much of that transitioning in, into high school, are you seeing fly fishing happening in high school, or is it still just kind of the bass circuit? It's it's really just the bass circuit. Okay. Um, and yeah, I mean, more, more predominantly down in southern Missouri. But yeah, it's, it's not really transitioning much to high school yet. But I'll tell you what, after everybody has seemed to get more outdoors with the whole... Oh, yeah. Uh, the whole pandemic and everything, I could see this maybe growing in popularity and really g- maybe grabbing a foothold. It's just in northern Missouri or northwest Missouri, it's it's just not the greatest place to get a foothold on fly fishing. <laughs> it's not. You know, there's not a lot of mountain streams. Uh, no. It's not the trout up here near Kansas City. No. Um, but I did do want to mention, it's worth stones throw from Roger Sporting Goods. Yeah. I think I could probably hit it with a rock. And oh, you yeah. mentioned that. So, yeah. If you gave me 10 throws, I could too. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, um, you know, it's incredible. You kind of talked about the, the outdoors thing happening right now. It's, mm-hmm. I've seen this across the board this spring. Fishing gear sold out. Mm-hmm. Hunting gear sold out. You know, ammunition sold out. Yep. Which, as an avid outdoorsman, kind of sucks. But as someone who likes the industry, I'm very encouraged. Yes. So, have you seen that with fly fishing a little bit? Um, yes. Um, not as much, but it's kind of hard to gauge because you just don't see it, you know, everywhere. You don't, you don't go to Walmart and pick up a fly rod. Yeah. Um, but I, I have, I've seen, you know, places are running low on tying materials and there's not as many combos as, yep. you know, there used to be. And I was at Rainbow Fly Shop in Independence, um, about a week ago. And, uh, yeah, they didn't have very many, very many rods in stock and, I, you know, I know they're doing pretty good business right now. So, I mean, I, I think it's just kind of hard to keep up with demand, which, yeah, you're right. It, <laughs> it, when I go in somewhere, I want to find what I'm looking for, but at the same time, you know, 
that that's a lump that I'll take if that means more people are doing it. I'm a hundred percent the same way. You know, Uh I I like to complain Mm because I'll wait to the last minute to buy dove decoys, but Uh you know, it's good because it means a lot of people are out there. Yeah. Yeah. And I was actually up at, we've got a family farm about an hour away from here. It's on the border of Ray and Carroll County. Mm -hmm. And we woke up Saturday morning. We'd gone up there and fished Friday night and fished Saturday morning and it sounded like a war zone, man. Yeah. I've never heard so many people shooting doves. Like yeah. since, and I've been going there since I could walk. <laughs> I was like, it sounded more like deer season than dove season. I just yeah. don't remember that many doves getting shot at. Yeah, so it's interesting. I actually went yesterday with my wife and took her on our first hunt. Oh, and cool. We went dove hunting with a women's group out of Kansas, and um, and it was incredible. I kind of had the same experience. A lot more people on public land. Yeah, uh, a lot more people using those resources, and a lot more people hunting this spring, which yeah. is. I hope that, you know, we're kind of later in the summer and that's transitioning into fall. So, um, that's really good. Enough about that and the crazy pandemic stuff. Um, so one reason I want to talk about fly fishing is, is it's kind of intimidating Mm, in some ways to get into fly fishing. I, I kind of liken it to reloading where Mm -hmm. it's, there's a lot of intricate stuff and a lot of expensive stuff Mm -hmm. and you have to know a lot of things or it seems that way at Mm -hmm. least. And so... One of your videos that stuck out to me that you do on your YouTube channel mm-hmm. um, was the buying and testing a cheap fly rod. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but you bought like a $35 rod combo from Cargo Largo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my buddy who uh, builds, like, he makes split bamboo fly rods. Mm-hmm. He'll, he'll always jump on a deal like this, too, and he called me up, and he's like, man, they got they got a $45 combo <laughs> at Cargo Largo, and he bought four of them. Yep. I bought, like, three uh, and uh yeah it was it was refreshing to see something like that and i'll tell you what i mean it's it's one of those things that you know you get what you pay for the more mm-hmm. money you, you put into something i mean you're gonna have more quality equipment but you don't have to start off with that absolutely you don't have to start off with a 1500 hundred mm-hmm. dollar rod and reel combo with a drift boat and you know thousand dollar waders yeah yep. start off with something you know rainbow fly shop sells used rods and reels Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, you can get a combo for, you know, $100, $150, and a lot of those come with everything. Your backing, your fly line, your leader, a case. You know, a lot of them have uh, – sometimes you even get boxes with them mm. for flies. Um, but, yes, to your point, it is intimidating yeah. because it's just so different than anything that most fishermen or people that haven't fished are used to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you're not slinging a, a bobber and a sinker and putting a worm on a hook, and that's what people are used to. Mm-hmm. So anytime you get something that people aren't used to, yeah, it is intimidating because it's just the unknown and it's so different. Absolutely. So um, let's kind of start from the beginning. What sure. is fly fishing? What's the differentiation of fly fishing compared to standard bait fishing? Okay. So for the most part, the, the kind of the definition is, that you're you're not casting the weight of the lure with a fly rod. You're you're casting that fly line. The weight of the fly really doesn't matter because that's not really what you're throwing. You're using the momentum and the kinetic energy of the line itself. So that's one of the big definitions. One of the other big definitions of well, what is a fly? A fly is something that's handmade and the lines have kind of become a little bit blurred um, over the last few years about, well, do you, does it have to be natural materials? Does it have to be synthetic materials? Synthetic materials are becoming more and more popular all mm-hmm. the time. Um, I, I like to stick mainly with naturals, but, I mean, it's it's got to be handmade. It can involve synthetic materials, um, different hairs, um, you know, different feathers, uh, different threads, things like that. So, yeah. Um, and the other thing is, I, and I've never seen one, if, if there is a machine out there that makes flies, that would be new to me. <laughs> okay. As far, To my knowledge, every fly that I've ever seen or fished has been handmade. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's kind of the cool part. That's Absolutely. that's another part of the allure that, you know, you're, you're purposefully making something harder when you're fly fishing. Yep. It's hard to catch a fish. Mm-hmm. I would venture to say it's harder to catch a fish on a fly. But that's the rewarding part. 
Absolutely. And it's hard to catch a fish on a fly. It's harder to catch one on a fly that you've tied. <laughs> but that's what yeah. makes it feel so good. Yeah. Um, it's it's a little bit, it means a little bit more than, hey, I put a worm on a hook. Mm-hmm. It, it just carries a little deeper meaning to it. Absolutely. Well, and like we talked about earlier, I'm a big, I like to hunt and fish. Sure. And I like to cook that stuff. And, yes. Um, so it could be very easy. I can go to Walmart and buy steaks. I can go to Walmart and buy sure. fish. But part of Part of what I love about fishing and hunting is, you know, I got the lure and threw it in there and caused, you know, mm-hmm. tricked the fish into biting it. And that's why I'm eating tonight. And it's kind of the same, same thing with that fly, that next level of I tied this, you know, and I guess this color, you know, string or whatever would make it, you know, want to eat it. So yeah. that's I, I, that's one thing I like about fly fishing. Um, absolutely. And so thank you for, for bringing that out. Oh, that's all right. So... Some barriers to entry to fly fishing. Mm-hmm. So cost, we've talked cost, about yes. that. So um, like you're saying, you know, there's a lot of options out there. If you look around, you don't have to start out with five grand worth of equipment to be an effective fly fisherman. No. You no. start with pretty, you know, 100, 150 bucks rod, real combo, you know, some rubber boots, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of the stuff you already have. So we kind of talked about that. Now the next one is a lot of the fly fishermen get the stigma of being stuck up. <laughs> now you're not stuck up. Man. Well, I try not to be. No. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, that's that's definitely uh it's a stigma. And whether it's deserved or not, that's just kind of the way it is. Yep. But I can almost guarantee you, if you go anywhere and you ask any fisher any fly fisherman, they're gonna help you out. Yeah. I mean we maybe I don't know why that is the way it is. Maybe it's because like the some of the equipment is expensive mm-hmm. and you just associate that with being like stuck up or snooty or whatever. Yep. Mm-hmm. But I'll tell you what, you go down to Bennett Springs or Lake Tanny Como or anywhere and you, you go ask a fly fisherman, Hey, what are you doing? Or, Hey, what, what are you catching them on? Mm-hmm. I can almost guarantee you they're going to help. Yeah. Um, yeah. Be, because I think a lot of us recognize the stigma and we're trying to break it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's, and that's awesome that you kind of mentioned. I wanted to talk about it. It's not a big thing, but, uh. Um, well, it is. Yeah. And that's one of the intimidating things too, because, if you, if you don't get taught by someone how to fly fish that already knows how to fly fish, it, it's hard. To, it, it's a hard skill to pick up on your own, yep. and it, it's hard to approach a stranger and say, "Hey, can you can you show me how to do this?" That you, you're yeah. letting your guard down, and you're you're revealing yourself as someone who doesn't know what they're doing, and that. Is not easy for a no, lot of people. Just someone you don't know. Yes, yeah. exactly. Because that's your only option. That and YouTube. Yeah. And yep. you can watch videos all day long, mm-hmm. but that doesn't, that cannot take the place of someone, mm-hmm. you know, showing you how to do it or yeah. putting their hand on yours and showing you how to work a fly mm-hmm. rod. Yeah. We can talk about how to do a roll cast mm-hmm. all day long, but it's a lot quicker for you to show me. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know? So, um, absolutely. So we kind of covered cost. The, the attitude of some, or the stigma that some sure. fly fishermen have. Um, and then, you know, like talk about the fancy equipment. So, um, some of it, I think, is just stuff that no one's seen before mm-hmm. or haven't seen a lot of, um, like the waders, you know, mm-hmm. the chest packs, um, the small uh, clippers to get, you know, f- to clip fly line and change out flies. So, um, kind of talk about the different equipment that you would need. If you were starting to fly fish, what okay. would you need? Um, you know, aside from the basic setup of a rod and reel, um, definitely a box for flies. Um, you know, some, you know, if you, if you go to a, you know, local fly shop or just a fly shop and say, Hey, you know, here's, here's what I'm wanting to get started with. That's going to be your next important thing. Okay. Um, a good leader that's not too heavy or too light or too long or too short. Um, maybe, I mean, if, if you didn't want to commit to like a fly fishing vest or backpack, just grab like a school backpack, Mm, throw all your stuff in there. Um, definitely some hemostats like the surgical clamps mm-hmm. or even just a pair of needle nose pliers and that'll keep you from tearing up your flies. Yeah. So that's going to be important. Um, good small pair of scissors, some nail clippers. Um, one of the most important tools that I bought and I still carry with me is it's, I think it's called a tie fast tool. I think they cost about 10 bucks. Okay. They're these li- it, it looks like a weird aluminum bent piece of junk. <laughs> but it enables you to tie a lot of your knots that you got to learn okay. a whole lot faster. And it's almost like giving you a third hand because a lot of these knots that you got to tie, it feels like you need three or four hands to do it. Yep. Um, so that's $10 well spent. And I think I've bought like six of them over the course of my <laughs> career and they're everywhere in the yep. glove box. Yep. They're in every fly vest that I own. You know, they're, yeah, I'd never want to be without one. 
Uh, but that's really it. Um, okay. So, but that that is another thing that that stops people from getting started. Is I mean, there's a lot of knots to learn. Absolutely. And no, but nobody wants to sit around in their living room <laughs> practicing fishing knots. Right. But right. you gotta do it. Mm-hmm. Another thing would be, um, you know, learning if you're if you're fishing for trout, learning the entomology of a stream. Okay. I didn't want to become an entomologist. Yeah. But I want to catch fish, <laughs> so I better figure out some of it. So. Yeah. A, a buddy of mine explained it to me really well in regards to catfishing. Mm-hmm. You know, he said, when you if you're going to catch catfish on cut bait, you know, bluegill or something like that, go to the lake you're fishing in, catch the bluegill there, the green sunfish, because that's what the catfish are used to eating. Right. You know, and it's kind of the same thing with etymology of the stream. It's, mm-hmm. You know, if you don't have the right color for the nymph or whatever, or what time of year mm-hmm. you know, you're throwing it, you're not going to have much luck, you know, generally. So that's... Those are some boring things, but we all, yeah. all need to learn. And um, for those listening, I'm gonna you know tag Tyler's um, pot, or YouTube channel in the notes so everyone can watch it. You got a lot of good videos Thank on you. on learning that stuff. So um, okay, so let's go on here. Um, so tell me about your YouTube channel. Why did you start that? What was the story behind it? Well, I, I really started the YouTube channel because. I started a blog and I started the blog because I ran out of pages in my fishing journal (laughs) and I looked all over the place. I couldn't find one. And then our school librarian was like, Hey, you should start a blog, you know, just some write something every day. Yeah. And then I started doing that and I got a good response. And then I thought, well, you know, people probably won't watch videos more than they want to read nowadays. Mm -hmm. So I started the YouTube channel and I, I did it just as like an expansion of the blog and the blog sends people to YouTube and YouTube sends people to the blog but it was just another media that I could use to show people what I'm doing. When I teach school, the majority of my students are visual learners. They need to see it. Mm-hmm. So that's why I started the YouTube channel so somebody could actually see it in action rather than just reading about it. And, you know, like you brought up a roll cast earlier. It's hard to describe how to do a roll cast. Yep. But if you see somebody do it, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, my most viewed video on YouTube is How to Fly Fish for Bluegill. <laughs> I never would have imagined that it has like 32, 33,000 views. Mm-hmm. I never would have thought that people want to people want to visually see how to fish for bluegill. Yeah. But everybody's got access to bluegill. Yep. It's easy. It's a good way to get started. And I, I guess I show people enough uh, to get started and mm-hmm. to keep things basic and simple. But yeah, that was it. It was just another, another way to teach what I wanted to teach. Awesome. You know, and that's one thing I wanted to mention. Um, you know, sometimes with heavy tackle, it's great to pull in a giant fish and yep. enjoy doing that. But one thing I love about fly fishing is you throw like a three weight um, rod mm-hmm. and you're catching a little bluegill off a dock. That's a lot of fun. It is. Um, you know, just that lighter equipment and letting a, you know, couple ounce bluegill run around with your fly. It's, it's some fun stuff. It is. And that's, that's the way I was raised. I, my dad taught me that it's not about horsing in fish. Mm-hmm. It's not. You know, bass flipping them in the boat, which yeah. is fine. If that's your thing, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But my dad taught me the best part of catching a fish is that moment where you're both connected and it's fighting and it's pulling and you're pulling back. Like, that's it. Mm-hmm. That's the fun part. Yeah. And when I got into fly fishing, it just, it just increased that. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, everything feels bigger on a fly rod. Mm-hmm. And that's the fun part. And the fight is fun. And you're a lot more evenly matched if you're throwing. Six pound, you know, a six pound leader, and you hook into a three pound fish or four pound fish, you're <laughs> going to take, it's going to take a little more skill and a little more time to get yeah. that fish in rather than if I'm throwing 50 pound braid and I just yank it out of the water. Yep. Yeah. That's, that, that's, that's not the, the fun part for me. Absolutely. And, <clears throat> you know, one, one thing I think is a lot of these TV shows, um, which are awesome, I love seeing the sportsman um, representation grow, you know, TV mm-hmm. shows, podcasts, YouTube. But I think a lot of it's still focused on the biggest, mm-hmm. the the best, um, you know, the biggest set of antlers, the, sure. the largest largemouth. No. Um, and to me, I mean, that's cool. That is, there's a definitely a place for that because it takes skill to harvest those things. Um, but what I like about fishing and what attracts me to hunting is the game. You mm-hmm. know, it's it's the mind game. And um, so if I'm catching 10 or 15 bluegill, I'm really a yeah. lot happier than catching that one bass. Sure. Um, so I, I, I love that kind of sentiment you're talking about too. Okay. So, how much time do you spend fly fishing compared to bait fishing? Or you do not bait fish at all anymore? Um, I do. It's rare. Okay. And, and nothing against it. If mm-hmm. that's your thing, God bless you. Yeah. You know, go, go for it. I'm, yeah. I'm not talking bad about it. Anyway, I, just like the, I just like to do it my way. 
Bait fishing? Oh, man. I mean, the only time I ever really do it anymore is if the water's up on Tani Como and I got to drift power bait. (laughs) And that's okay. I don't mind that. Yeah. Um, You know, I I used to catfish um, at at some farm ponds. Mm -hmm. And I just can't sit there. And I just can't sit and do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, I tell some of my students and people that are new to fly fishing, and I'm not I'm not making fun of this because I think I got a little AD, adult ADHD myself. Yep. I'm like fly fishing is for people that might have ADHD because <laughs> you're always doing something, yep. and that's what I that's another part that I love is you're always active, mm-hmm. you're always casting or mending or stripping line or you know doing something to try and get a fish to bite mm-hmm. so yeah i don't i don't bait fish much anymore gotcha. but i understand it's got its place too absolutely absolutely <laughs> and i i'm with you i don't want to make fun of anyone that, that likes to bait fish but, sure no um, no i'm the same way that's what attracted me to fly fishing when i was 17 um is being able to walk around and you know throw something do something constantly mm-hmm. um because i was the same way my dad and i would catfish mm-hmm. and you, know, you sit on a dock and just sit there and wait. And that, that was not my game. No. Um, you know, this is time before cell phones, so uh-huh. you couldn't sit there and watch awesome YouTube videos or anything. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so uh, beginning in fly fishing. So, I actually, let's kind of back up here. So, mm-hmm. I watched a couple of videos on our YouTube channel. I saw the Wild West Tour. Oh, yeah. So, tell me about that. Holy cow, man. Oh, my gosh. That So, that was that was some, that was the most amazing fly fishing I've ever had. And I love Missouri. But when we were out in Wyoming, it was just it was just different. We went out on two guided trips. We fished the Snake River, the Snake River outside of Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and we were throwing these great big foam stone flies for cutthroat trout that were only native to that river. Okay, if you catch fine spotted cutthroats, mm-hmm. well, they originated from this place. So it's the only place that That's you can catch cool. native fine spotted cutthroats. which was awesome. So that was cool. We never caught anything huge. I caught one that was above average, um, but nothing monstrous. But it was still, you know, it was was awesome. You're in a drift boat, and the guide's telling you, throw there, throw there, do this. The other place we went was we stayed at a place called Cowboy Drifters, and they also set up our guides. And um, we went, they took us to a place called the Miracle Mile of the North Platte. Okay. And we drove for, I think, 20 miles on gravel. Like, there was literally an open range sign. Oh, wow. Like, I was like, this is still a thing? (laughs) I thought that, I didn't think we did this anymore. Uh Um, But we get out there, and I can, I can probably count on two hands how many, how many trout that I've landed on a fly rod that were 20 inches or longer. Mm, Okay. I boated four of those before lunch on this trip. It was insane, man. It it was, it was like fishing in Jurassic Park. Mm -hmm. Uh, We were running three fish set, or three fly setups, and, Mm. I mean, the fish were just huge. We were catching mainly rainbows. I caught one wild cut bow, which okay. was a cutthroat rainbow hybrid. Okay. And it was natural. He's, the, our guy was like, no, we don't stock those. Um, and then I, I saw on Instagram not too long ago, they're catching kokanee salmon out of there now. Oh, wow. The big red ones with the green heads uh-huh. and the lower jaws that grow all the big nasty teeth on them. <laughs> and uh, they're running up the North Platte now. Hmm. And... Uh, yeah, it was it was the single best day of fly fishing I've ever had. That's really cool to hear. Um, my girlfriend caught a twenty four inch six pound rainbow. Oh wow! On a and it was it was also kind of funny. We were throwing ten foot five weights. Okay, I'm like I've never seen a ten foot fly, five weight, and we were fishing eight pound leader. I was like, eight pounds? Where I come from, you're not going to catch anything with eight pound leader for trout. And they're like, ah, don't worry about it. They're not lying shy. They're not picky. And I'm like, oh, that helps me. So, yeah, it was great, man. I, yeah, I I literally changed my retirement plans after that trip. Oh, wow. Okay, so it was life changing. Yes, it was. It really was. Like, my my plan was to move down to Branson when I retired, just Mm -hmm. be closer to more water. Yeah. But, man, after being out there where... Fly fishing is not the exception; it's the norm. Mm-hmm. Like everybody out there, fly fishes. Yeah, and I was like, you know, I could, I think I could fit in in a, to, in a place like that. <laughs> it's kind of your speed. It yeah. was, it was. I was like, we could summer in Wyoming and winter in Branson. That'd be pretty sweet. That would not be a bad, bad place to be. <laughs> not so. bad, not bad. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Uh, let's look here. So, time of the year how How much mm-hmm. of the year are you fly fishing? How many months? Oh boy, I mean, you can. You can fly fish 12 months out of the year if you want to. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, 
you know, the, the trout don't care how cold the water gets in a stream. They're used to it. It probably yeah. doesn't change much at all, if any. Um, so, I mean, you can fly fish 12 months out of the year if you got a good spring-fed trout, uh, trout stream. Um, so, yeah, I mean, all, all year long. That's really cool to hear. Yeah. So, are, is your primary species your fishing for trout? Well, that's the that's the species I'd like to, but, you know, where I live, we're over 100 miles away from the closest trout stream. Yeah. So, yeah, I focus on them when I can and when I can get down south, you know, to more trout streams here in Missouri. But, uh, man, there's a lot of species around here that shouldn't be overlooked. We got uh, wipers in different lakes, and if I can only fly fish, if, if I knew how to fly fish for wipers... 12 months out of the year. That's all I'd ever fish. <laughs> oh my gosh. They'll pull a trout around by the tail. Those things are monsters. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's good fly fishing for largemouth. Mm-hmm. Uh, and people overlook that. There's, you know, if you've got a good bluegill pond and you're catching eight inch bluegill, mm-hmm. that's a solid place to go. Yeah. Um, but obviously those places are a little more temperamental than a trout stream. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, no, I, I just wanted to mention that. I said I wanted to make fly fishing as attractive as possible sure. to. Uh, you know, bait fishermen and guys mm-hmm. that never fished before. And I think if you can start with a species that they can just walk into their lake and yes. fish for, I, I think that's critical. So that's, that's why I wanted to mention it. Absolutely. I mean, you can go to your homeowner association pond and have a heck of a day with a fly mm-hmm. rod. Yeah. So let's talk about, as I walked in, you gave me the factory tour of the, <laughs> the fly tying operation here. So yeah, um, tell me about your website. What's your website? Okay. Um, so my my blog is showmeflyguy.blogspot.com, and that just kind of drives everything. Okay. Um, my Etsy store is just uh, showmeflyguy. Um, I forget what the, here it is. Etsy.com slash shop slash the showmeflyguy. Okay. Okay. Um, and that's something that I've probably been doing for a little over a year. Um, every I, I don't have a huge inventory mm-hmm. because I'm not going to sell flies for fly fishermen. I'm going to sell flies that work, mm-hmm. uh, that I've had personal experience with. Yeah. I'm not going to tie some flies up that I don't have an experience with and I don't have a lot of faith in. Mm-hmm. Um, so you'll probably notice if you go to the site that, wow, this guy, he only sells about a dozen patterns. Mm-hmm. Well, that's because those are the dozen patterns that, I've tried and they're proven and I believe in them mm-hmm. and I fish them. Um, there's an exception here and there. If somebody wants to make a custom order and they're like, Hey, can you tie this up for me? Or, Hey, I saw this. Yeah, I'll tie that up for you. But I'm not just going to put flies that I don't believe in out there for people to buy. Yeah. Because I don't want them to buy them and think, well, this thing doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And then they don't, then they think, well, this guy sold me some worthless <laughs> flies and they never come back and they go bad mouth me and say, well, don't buy from this guy. This stuff's yeah. worthless. So, yeah, I mean, that's okay. that's it. It's small batch. I mean, usually I don't have much more than like a dozen or so in stock because I don't want to sit there and crank them out as fast as I can because you're going to lose quality and they're not mm-hmm. going to look like what you want them to look Absolutely. like. Absolutely. And I like that um, that idea of, like I said, your personal experience, your mm-hmm. personal opinion driving uh, the fly patterns and what you're tying. So, uh, that's one thing I really do like about a smaller fly shop, you know, and I'm sure that people could call you or email you and you get your opinion oh, yeah. on what they want to do. Okay. Yeah, I've had people do that. They've contacted me. There's there's a fly that I sell called a near deer. Okay. And I look at it and I'm, I just shake my head and I'm like, are you serious? I don't care much for this fly, but <laughs> you do. It's a, what you want, not what I want. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. So uh, talk about tie flying. Yeah. So that's kind of intimidating as well. Um, like I said, it's... You have to have a jig, a little vice, mm-hmm. and little, vice. little tools. Yep. So talk about the bait, kind of explain what tying fly is or how okay. that starts and go on from there. Okay, so you got to have a vice, and a vice is like your third hand, or a vice like what you'd have on like a woodworking bench. Mm-hmm. It's just going to hold that hook, and um, you don't need to start with anything too expensive. You can get a $10 or $15 vice. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're going to need some hooks. Um, you're going to need some thread. And the, the thread is going to be what actually attaches everything to the fly. The thread is... Probably the most critical thing. And then from there, you're just going to start attaching materials like rabbit hair, deer hair, uh, yarn called chenille. We, us fishermen, or fly fishermen, I always got to call, call it something different than what it is. Yep. Maybe that's why we get the snooty reputation. Uh-huh. It's not a bobber, it's a strike indicator. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so uh, you just start off with some basic materials, and there's some easy flies to learn. It's one material. That's mm-hmm. it. There's some easier, or there's some little harder ones that are two materials. Mm-hmm. There's some that are three materials. There's some that are a dozen materials. I know a guy that I think he f- ties for Ozark Mountain Fly Company, Ozark okay. Mountain something, and he ties a crawdad 
that is just killer. Hmm. But he says it takes him like 15, 20 minutes on each one, and oh, each man. one has about a dozen materials. Wow. But by golly, that thing looks like a crawdad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's good. Um, but yeah, it is intimidating because, you know, everything's foreign and unknown. But in my, I've noticed in my fly fishing club, I get so many people that are more interested in tying flies mm-hmm. than actually fishing them. <laughs> they, it's, it's the art and the creativity, but it's also, it's like cooking where if you just read the directions and follow it step by step, you should produce a fine product. Mm-hmm. But there's also some leeway in there for, what if I did this? Mm-hmm. What if I did that? What would that look like? What would that do? So it's a little... I would say fly fishing is a lot of science and a little bit of art, and fly tying is a little bit of both. Okay. You know, what are you trying to imitate, and how can you do that? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it, it it is a little intimidating, but for anybody new to it, your best friend is YouTube. Yep. There are some outstanding YouTube channels out there for fly fishing. One of the best ones I've ever seen is Fly Fishing the Ozarks with Brian Wise. Okay. That guy is phenomenal. That guy, and he makes short videos that are kind of sped up, but you can click through it and mm-hmm. pause and things. But you watch that, and you'll, you'll think, yeah, I could do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're going a little faster than me, but I think I could, I could, I think do, I could do the same thing. <laughs> there's probably a couple more knots to learn. You know, you're fly tying as opposed to just fly fishing. You know, there's really not. Okay. There, there's only one. And that comes at the end, and that's the mm-hmm. tough one. That's one, if, if you got like a, a special tool, like a whip finishing tool. Yeah. But as far as knots... Yeah, there's only one at the end for the most part, and that's about it. Gotcha. Um, well, that's yeah. less intimidating. Ironically. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot less intimidating. Yeah. yeah. Less knots is good. Less yeah. knots are better, <laughs> yes. It's awesome. So we talked a little bit about um, you know the cost of stuff. Do you mm-hmm. want to talk about that, that rod and reel you bought from Cargo Largo? Sure. Kind of go into that. Um, and, and like I said, you know, it was an incredible deal. Uh-huh. And talk about what happened when you fished it, what came with it, and all that. Man, I was shocked. I was all ready for... You know, this is this is going to be a backup rod. I'll throw it in the truck. Mm-hmm. If it bangs around, you know, whatever. You know, I, I don't have a lot of money in it. If a guy you don't like comes fly fishing, yeah. you can give him that one. <laughs> this is your uh, buddy. Yeah. yeah. Me, and, me and my expensive one will be over here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so I, I, I went and buy it, and I, I look at it. And I'm, I'm looking at it, and I think, this is pretty well put together. This isn't bad. And it was from a, a company called Max Catch. Okay. And I'd never heard. So I, I didn't know much about their reputation. Um, all I knew was it was a three to four weight. And I didn't own a three weight. I own a four weight. But I thought, well, this this might be a little bit more fun, like for trout and mm-hmm. bluegill. And put a little more bend in your rod and get, make the fight a little more evenly matched. Yeah. And I just couldn't believe how that rod cast and how it worked. And it, 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 was, it was dumbfounding to me. I, I just couldn't believe. Like, I just stumbled on this. I will tell you the the reel's a piece of junk. Like it, it like it it rubs on itself. Like about that time you get like down to the six o'clock, and then it kind of kind of clicks uh, forward. The reel's not great, but yeah, it was just it was just astonishing to me that I mean something so that felt so good in my hands was mm-hmm. so inexpensive. And to go along with that, I've heard stories about like Cabela's brand rods mm-hmm. that. If you do a blind test with those against rods that are twice as much, people can't tell the difference and sometimes favor the Cabela's rods. Hmm. Okay. So, I mean, there are deals out there. Yeah. There are things that you can do and, and things that you can pick up for, for a little bit of money um, and and kind of get lucky sometimes. Yeah. Well, and I think um, the big thing, too, is it gets you on the water. Yes. You know, it gets you out there putting a line or a fly in the water. Mm-hmm. That's cool. And, you know, if you think about that deal, because I watched that video and I was sitting there going, okay, the rod alone, if you just got the rod for $45, like, that's a deal. Yeah. You know, if you just got that much line and mm-hmm. backing, that little box the flies came in, I was yes. like, man, if I was at a garage sale, like, yeah, I'll take a couple, you know. Um, so, that, I think that was a really, really cool deal to see. So. Yeah, that was a $15 fly box <laughs> with some flies in it. Yeah. And yeah. I'll probably never use the flies, but I was like, this is paying for itself really quickly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it starts to make sense. Yeah. So, um, let's go here. So let's talk about if if a guy has never fly fished before, where are three tips you're going to give him to start out? Three tips for somebody who's never fly fished. Um, you don't need a lot of muscle. Okay. Um, I have noticed in teaching middle school kids how to fly fish, and I don't even know how many by, you know, by now, is that normally the guys want to 
really put a lot of muscle and strength into a rod and it's it's not that it's not the strength it's it's the timing and it's the finesse mm. and traditionally i mean as far as middle school kids go girls start off casting better than guys do because <laughs> they've got the, the touch and the timing and the boys are over here trying to horse a hundred foot cast yeah I'm like back her down killer <laughs> okay <laughs> so it's not about strength it's about timing and um uh, touch mm-hmm. um the second thing i would say is don't be afraid to fail like it, I, it's gonna be frustrating you are going to make mistakes you're gonna get knots i remember that one of the first times i took a fly rod down at bennett spring state park at the end of the day i wanted to put that thing under the back to back of my top back of my truck tire and back over that yeah. run forward and back it over again <laughs> So it, and that's the second thing. It can be frustrating. Mm-hmm. Just know that going in. Don't go out there thinking you're going to look like Brad Pitt shadow casting and a river runs through. <laughs> you're not gonna. You're gonna be bad. Yeah. Just, but, but that's the way it is with anything. Mm-hmm. It, the first time you ever shot a free throw, you probably weren't very good. Yeah. But you get better with it. Mm-hmm. So have some patience. Know it's going to be hard. And don't think that just because you're big and strong, that's going to make you a better fly fisher. Mm-hmm. And I guess the, the last piece of advice that I could give, because this made a huge difference to me, is watch other people. Mm. Watch what they're doing. Try and imitate them. When I was growing up in high school, I played high school basketball. I know I don't think I ever made it through watching an entire Michael Jordan game, uh-huh. because I get halfway through, watch him do something, and think, I bet I can do that. <laughs> and I'd run out the door with my basketball. I'd come yeah. back 30 minutes later, sweat rolling down my face, and my dad would say, did you figure it out? I'm like, I got there. Yeah. Yeah. I can jump off my left foot, go into the basket, and come up with a right hand on the other side and make a layup. I figured it out. Yeah. So watch other people. I mean, if you don't know what you're doing, watch somebody that does. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's the way it is for anything. Hunting, yep. you know, uh, especially bow hunting. Good gracious. Yep. Watch somebody that knows what they're doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, that's, I agree with that. And, um, you know, I kind of, when I talk to people that hunt, you usually get into gun hunting, you know, mm-hmm. either as a kid or it's a lot easier to kind of grab a rifle and go hunting. Mm-hmm. And then they like it and they get into bow hunting and it's kind of like flashing. It's that, yes. that's like the, you know, the, the door to addiction. Yes, um, that's exactly you know, what it is. Where yeah. it's, you suck at it and it's hard uh-huh. and, um, but it's so much rewarding and oh, so much yeah. fun. So Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I can remember so many more fish that I caught on a fly rod than I can. You know, like a spinning rod. Absolutely. And I can only imagine that if, if I shot a deer with a bow, I would rem- mm-hmm. I would remember that so much more vividly than anything I shot with a rifle at 175 yards. Yeah. The, the first deer I shot with a bow uh, was a doe. Yeah. And that was one of the hardest deer I've ever had to kill. Um, there were, I had seven opportunities that day before I shot her. Uh-huh. You know, and it was very rewarding. <laughs> yeah. So, kind of the same thing. So, we got through the first two tips. And what's the third tip you give to The third one was you watch people. Watch people. Watch okay, other right. people. Sorry. Oh, my gosh. I watched this guy one time down at Bennett Springs, and I, I was tired, and I was eating my lunch. And I watched this dude, and I met his – I accidentally ran into his wife, and um, he was he was from Montana originally. Mm-hmm. And all this dude threw was black ants. That was it. <laughs> That's the only fly he would ever throw. But he'd throw them at the bank, and I watched him catch about five fish in 20 minutes. Mm. And he had the most beautiful cast I've ever seen. And ever since I saw that, it, it kind of something clicked in my mind. I thought – Okay, I, I think I might have just learned how to actually throw a fly rod <laughs> rather than what I've been doing yeah. <laughs> for yeah. the last few years. So, yeah, watch other people. You know, you, don't be humble. No other people are better than you, and that's okay. Yeah, and I do want to encourage, we did talk about earlier, um, go down to Bennett Springs. Go yes. down to some of these um, really good Missouri streamways that we have. Yes. And there's a lot of people there, a lot of resources, mm-hmm. and um, one thing I did when I first started fly fishing, my wife is very gracious. On mm-hmm. our honeymoon, we went on a on a guided fly fish trip down Tani Como. Oh, nice! So, uh, and I the the guide was great. His name was Stan Thompson. The entire time, I'm just talking my talking his ear off, asking him questions. Yeah. So, so why are we throwing here? What what part of the river you're looking at? And um, I picked up a lot of knowledge, you know, that day. And you know, it's a little bit pricey, but I think if you can ask somebody, you know, or if you have the the ability to go with a guide. Mm-hmm. Just spending one day with them or, or one or two times, you're going to learn a lot. Uh, yes. There's a reason why guides are expensive. 
And it's mm-hmm. because they're worth it. Absolutely. Now, obviously, I'm on a teacher's salary. I don't have <laughs> thousands and thousands of dollars yeah. to toss around. But by golly, I, if I ever go to a new body of water mm-hmm. ever again, I will hire a guide. I'll yeah. save up more money. Mm-hmm. Because when we were out west, we went to Yellowstone and didn't hire a guide. Mm-hmm. Got skunked. Yep. Like, that was my humbling experience. It knocked me down a few rungs and mm-hmm. made me think. Okay, I don't know as much as I thought I did. Yep. So, you know, put your put your ego in check. Mm-hmm. Save up a little bit more money if you got to. Mm-hmm. And, yes, hire a guide. Because nobody knows that water better than that guide. Mm-hmm. And you don't know anything about that that's water. Right. Right? And that's, right. that's okay. Like, yeah. be okay with that. Yeah. Admit that. Like, I don't know anything about this river. Yeah, that, And that's all right. No, that's a really good perspective to have. And what I've done is, uh, you know... And, uh, when you talk about expense for a guy, mm-hmm. I mean, they can be as cheap as $150, $200 sure. for, for a day or half a day. Sure. And um, what I've done is when you go to New Body Water, hire that guy mm-hmm. and talk to him, ask a couple questions. And um, uh, one question I always ask is, hey, I don't want to step on your toes, mm-hmm. but if you were here for two or three days, where, where would you send me? You know, or where, where would you Absolutely. think would be a good place to fish? And most guys I've talked to are very, very open about that, especially mm-hmm. if you kind of start with, hey, I don't want to come in here and see you tomorrow, you know, trying to catch uh, flies behind you. But yeah. Um, and, and, you know, you think about it, if you take a trip, you know, out west, you're spending a couple, couple grand probably. Sure. You know, spending a couple extra hundred dollars for, for a, for a guide to make the trip. I think that's, I think that's definitely worth it. So. Yes. Cause think about how disappointing would you be if you went to a, a river that you just, you were so excited to fish and you got skunked because you didn't know what they were biting on or where they were. Mm-hmm. Didn't have the boat. Yeah. Like that, that'd be disappointing. Mm-hmm. And that make you not want to do it again. Absolutely. And that's not what we want to feel. No, no. When the first night that we were out in outside of Casper, I, I thought, well, I'm a fly fisherman. I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this for almost 20 years. I went out, saw some fish, didn't catch a single one. Mm-hmm. We went out with a guide. Like I said, I boated four rainbows that were 20 inches or longer by lunch. Mm. Like I said, they are worth it. You're paying for that knowledge and all that time. The knowledge, the boat, everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, shoot, you could rent a boat and still go out and get skunked. (laughs) Yep, yep. So talking about boats. Yeah. You, you, when we came in the house, you want to tell me a little bit about your recent boating decisions. Yeah. So one, it's, it's funny. One of the first things that people want to ask is, can you fly fish out of a boat? Absolutely. You can fly fish out of a boat. Yes. Yes. Please do. But I, I bought a big bass boat. Um, uh, earlier this summer and I just, it, it was not for me between charging the batteries, backing it down the ramp, pulling the boat out. It was an older boat. Sometimes it wouldn't start trying to figure that out. And I was like, you know what? Nope. I'm, I'm out. So I've got two bass hunter bass babies and I've got two sons mm-hmm. and a girlfriend and she's got a son and I've got a kayak as well. So there's five of us, five rears that I can put in five seats. Yeah. So it's just, it's, I, there's something I like about simplicity mm-hmm. and those boats are simple. You know, if something breaks, well, it was the trolling motor or the battery because those are your only options yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or, a, or a paddle on your kayak Yeah, and that's all fixable. Yeah. You know, I don't understand small engines and electrical work and I don't have to deal with those as there a result. Um, and the, kind of go along with that is, and people kind of turn their nose up when I say this and I get it. it that's fine. But I don't really run like tapered leader to tippet. Mm-hmm. When I go fly fishing for largemouth or wipers, I'll peel off six feet of 10 pound fluorocarbon off a spool mm-hmm. and I'll tie my nail knot to my fly line and I'll t- tie my improved clinch knot to my fly. And that's it. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not making all these kinds of knots because the, I guess the way I feel about it is the more knots I have, the more things can go wrong. Absolutely. With that big boat that I bought. I had more options, mm-hmm. more things to go wrong. Mm-hmm. So that, and again, that's just me. If you own a big bass boat, mm-hmm. you know, you love it to death. Good for you. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. It wasn't for me. Yeah. Um, you know, if you fish tapered leader with, you know, seven X tippet coming off of it. Awesome. Yep. I would rather it be simpler. Yeah. But I'm the same way. I do like the finesse uh, that goes along with fly fishing. And um, part of the finesse to me is the simplicity. Right? Yes. Um, you know, when the first time I cast a fly rod, I had a lot of trouble. It reminded me of the first time I golfed. And, um, you know, I was trying to do the same thing like middle school kids do. Yeah. You know, where I'm trying to horse that oh, ball man. out there. And once I kind of figured out, like, with a fly rod, just, just let it fly, you know, the timing of it. Mm-hmm. And that was the, that was kind of the aha moment for me. Yeah. So. And 
it, it's also hard to figure out, oh, I have more line out. <laughs> this is going to be a different touch. Yeah. And the thing that didn't come to me until I got a little more into it was even flies cast differently. Mm-hmm. So you got to take that into consideration. So, the, yeah, there's there's always more to learn and there's always more to do. But it's it's that challenging. It's fun. It is. Yeah, yes. Fun. So, so I'm going to test your knowledge here. Oh, uh, gosh. So now okay. we got three tips for the kind of intermediate okay. fly fisherman. You know, a guy's been fly fishing two or three years. Mm-hmm. He's fishing a couple bodies of water. What are you going to tell him what's kind of to take his game to the next level? Next level. Um, I would say, okay, the first thing, and I read this uh, in, a jo- in, a, in a book by John, I think it's, I think it's pronounced Girock. Okay. Very well-known fly fishing author. He said, cast as many rods as you can. Mm-hmm. Every rod you can get your hand on, do it so you can understand how different equipment operates differently. So I'd say cast as many rods as you can to see what do you like? Mm-hmm. What's what's its application? It's like if you went into Lowe's or Home Depot and you see four different saws. Well, don't you want to understand how all those saws work in order to yeah, build absolutely. the best product? Well, you want to fish different fly rods so you understand Okay, I could use this for this. It's it's a tool for the job. Um, then I guess the next thing I would say is you know venture out of your comfort zone. You don't don't get stuck in the mold of fishing one fly and that's it. You know, become more versatile. Fish different flies. Do different things. Fail. Make mistakes because the best thing we can do is learn from our mistakes. And and I tell my students that I tell friend you know anybody I introduce to it, friends to it you know whatever. Um, And I guess the last thing is maybe get out there and fly fish for something you didn't know you could catch on fly rod. Hmm. So there there are flies that you can use for gar that have no hook in them. Yep. It's just made out of frayed out rope. Mm -hmm. And I still have yet to catch a gar on one of those. (laughs) But I'm not done. (laughs) You're still trying. So yeah, get out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Like don't be satisfied that you can fish one fly at Roaring River State Park and catch Mm -hmm. fish. Yep. You know, in the morning. Figure out a way to catch them all day. Yep. So. And all different bodies of water. Yes. Places. Yeah. You know, one of the hardest fish I've ever fished for is carp. Really? Those things are smart. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, they're smart. And excellent eyesight. And it's hard. And I've thrown a thousand different flies at them. And I've found a few that I've, ca- I've caught them on. Uh-huh. But oh my gosh, if I hadn't pushed myself to do something that was harder, I wouldn't have had that rewarding experience. Well, it's kind of like time spent in the outdoors. I, I always learn something. Sure. Um, so it's kind of the same thing with fishing. If you're trying different flies, and you may not be a big fan of catching carp, but you'll learn something. You can apply that to uh, other types of fishing. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. So we're going to wrap up here, Tyler. Is there anything okay. else you wanted to say about fishing, fly fishing, anything like that? You know, just like I said, just be patient. Know that anything new, you get better at it with time. Um, enjoy it. It's not always about how many fish you land. Maybe just land one memorable fish. Mm. And that's great. You know, don't don't be a perfectionist. Don't go out there and think you got to catch 100 fish to have a good fly fishing trip. Yeah. Just it's it's important to be outdoors and appreciate you know what you have right there in front of you. Uh I think Al Pacino said it in any given Sunday. Life's the 6 inches in front of your face. Like mm. appreciate that. Just yeah. because I'm not, I can't remember who said it, but they said, when you're fly fishing, that's all you have to do. Because if your mind's off somewhere else, mm-hmm. you're not going to catch anything. Yeah. Because you have got to be dialed in. And I think that's why people love fishing so much, especially fly fishing. Because you've got to cl- you've got to push out and close out everything else, every distraction yeah. around you to catch a fish. Mm-hmm. You can get down there and you can worry about your stock market portfolio all you want, <laughs> your savings account and all that stuff, but you're not going to catch anything. You got to be dialed in, and you got to focus. It's it's like, and with fly fishing, it's probably a hyper focus. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, when you come off the water, you think those things that bothered me before I came down here to the water, they don't bother me as much anymore. (laughs) They aren't that important. They're not. They're not. They were at the time, but it kind of puts things in perspective. That's cool. That's a good way to put it. So, Tyler, again, uh, where can they find you? Okay. So, I'm on Facebook, Facebook, YouTube. Just search the Show Me Fly Guy. Uh, the blog is showmeflyguy.blogspot.com. And then if you just search on Etsy, the Show Me Fly Guy, 
that's it. That'll that'll awesome. take you to the flies that I sell. Sounds good. I hope some people buy some flies and that'd be great. You a little bit. Uh, that'd be great. And use your YouTube channel to gain some knowledge. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, uh, and the YouTube channel is is designed to teach people and little entertainment, little humor as well, yeah. because nobody wants to, you know, watch a textbook being read to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, and, and email me, uh, showmeflyguy at gmail dot com. I get questions all the time. I get you know custom orders it you know i i i'm a teacher for a reason mm -hmm. i like to help people i like to teach so if i can help anybody or teach anybody hey i'm 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 all for it i love it i love it tyler so thanks for coming on with me thank you and uh we'll talk to you later all right sounds good <laughs>